Okay, so we are gonna take you through Google AI Studio. We're gonna explain what creating a prompt is, what streaming real time is, the starter apps that exist inside of it, um, tuning a model, and then some of the interesting use cases Google has built through this process, right? Okay, let's get into it. Here we go. This is, I like to think of it as a beginner's platform for how can I interact with AI that isn't inside of a Gemini chatbot? What is some of the cool uses of this technology and how can I start using it to build things? So create a prompt is just a very simple explanation of how you might use and train a model on something. So if I just ask Gemini uh, for explanatory answers, long paragraphs. These are the instructions that we're asking the model to talk to us in, right? So when I ask it a question or I give it a prompt, it's going to produce an answer with this. Let's give it something relatively complicated with some numbers. What is the population of the UK? Let's just leave it at that. On the right hand side, we have a choice between all of the models that Google has put out. Some of them are Gemini, I have no idea what that is. Gemini, which is some of the ones that we started seeing last year, which is really nice. And then some of the newer ones, right? We've got the preview ones here, Learn LM, Gemini 2.0. And then we got the full, full blooded Gemini 2.0s. I'm going to be using the thinking experimental one because I love models that have reasoning built into them and I love models that have multimodal understanding. So, text, image, audio, sound, uh, as well as video. So, eyes and ears is how I like to think of that. If we use flash thinking, we actually get a free token count. It's about a million tokens. Uh, I've never broken through a million token barrier, even in all the playing that I've done. So that's pretty good. The temperature is the creativity that's allowed in responses, which is actually surprisingly useful. If you want something just to talk about the text that it's been trained on, you don't want any creativity. You just want it to produce the work that it's, uh, produce an outcome from the work that it's been trained on. But if you want creativity, you want to brainstorm, you probably want something to do with a higher creativity level. So towards two, let's leave it at, let's leave it at 0.75. If I'm writing code, as I'll show you, I can actually execute the code inside of this, which would be quite cool. Um, I can turn that on, turn that off. And then I've got the safety settings. We're just gonna, we're gonna roll on this guy. We're just gonna go full Elon and just no safeties at all. Um, stop sequence. I don't really use those at all. I never like ask it to stop. Sometimes I interject, but typically I don't. And then the output length is the number of tokens that it can use, the max number of tokens. Top P is sort of like creativity as I've, as I've understood it, right? Um, it's called nuclear sampling. It's a technique used in AI language models to control the diversity and creativity of the generated text. So it's not temperature, it's something else. <laughs> Basically, if you go closer to one, it's more creative. You go closer to zero, it's less creative. Rule of thumb. Let's get into this. We're gonna run this. And we can see that Google has thinking. We've expanded the thoughts. It's gone through this thinking process. The user is asking about the population of the UK. Uh, to answer this question properly, I should give, I should provide the most up-to-date figure available and also give context to the number. That's exactly what I want. The plan that it's put together, Find the most recent official population estimate for the UK. State the population figure clearly. Mention the source of the data. Provide the data estimate. Uh, briefly define what the UK includes and potentially mention that population figures are constantly changing and this is an estimate. Well, that is pretty awesome. Um, 67.7 million from the Office of National Statistics. Not a bad way to start. Explain what the breakup of, Eng of the United Kingdom is. So the four countries that exist, exist inside of that. And then looking at how that population might have changed since mid-2022. It's not bad. Not a bad start. Now, what if we clear the chat and we ask it to uh, give it a 
give a really simple answer in the tone of a child uh, as if you were a mother explaining to her boy. Her kid. Um, right, cool. The tone of a... Yeah, let's do that that way. And here we're going to go with... Uh, same question. What is the population of the UK? Let's see what it does here. I actually haven't run this before, so it'll be interesting for me as well. Okay, sweetie, imagine you have a huge pile of teddy bears. The bigger the whole house, each teddy bear was a person living in the UK. You would have about 70 million teddy bears. Not bad, not bad. There's a mountain of teddies, right? That's how many people are living in the UK. Lots and lots and lots. I like it. But what's interesting here is you can play with it. You can tweak the system instructions to give you a... Uh, a style and tone of voice that you like for your particular use case. Let's move on to stream in real time. Why is this interesting, right? Like above everything else, um, it's giving you the ability to interact with the multimodal and, and kind of computer vision capabilities that Gemini has, right? Specifically the, the 2.0 models because they're really, really good. And if you can throw in a reasoning, even better. So, uh, in here, we've only got the flash experimental, but we're going to share our screen and we're going to show you how to and how this is used. So share my screen. I'm going to give it access to, uh, I'm going to give it access to, let's go to stream real time. I'm going to give it access to the screen that I'm viewing currently. Uh, how do I use this? I see you have a screen capture of Google AI Studio open. To use it, you would type your prompt into the text box at the bottom, then press the play button to the right of it. You can also configure settings in the right panel, such as the model, output format, and other features. Is there anything specific you would like help with? What prompts are worth trying? That's a great question. There are many types of prompts you could try, such as creative writing prompts, where you ask the model to write stories, poems, or scripts. You could also try question answering prompts, where you give the model some context and ask it questions. Which type of prompts sounds most interesting to you? On the left side of the page. The starter apps on the left side of the page are examples of pre-built prompts and tools. They're there to help you get started okay, so and under pause this for a second. I'm going to explain why this is important. You now don't need a coach to show you a walkthrough coach, to show you how to things are done online, right? You can load up all of the relevant information of how to use the product service or something online. It doesn't have to be online, can be in person. And you can use tools like this inside of a wrapper, and what I mean by a wrapper is you take this technology, you stick it inside of a really nice UX, you throw in the context, and it's able to walk you through how to use something. Now, wouldn't that be great? So, for example, um, I recently put a table together for my mum. I can't show you it because it's in the other room, but it was, if it was a complicated table, I might have been there for hours, right? Having to constantly reference the instructions, etc. In a case like this, I would have been able to, one, upload the documentation and talk to the model and ask it questions about, you know, how do I do this? Where should I do that? Why should I do this this way? You know, is this the right way to do this? Or should I start with the legs first instead of the tabletop? Um, in fact, I could also then take photos and videos and say, is this angled right? Or should I be using more force potentially like that's a future we can end up in well, force is a bit difficult but you get the crux i really like this capability because it can it's got a lot of potential in some of the stuff that we do on a daily basis uh the roof of my car broke needed to get that fixed i can now use multimodal capabilities to diagnose a problem faster how awesome is that Love this, love stream real time. And then you can also start streaming real time with uh, through other applications, right? So I can use the Gemini models, I can stream that text straight in and it's like a chatbot, right? Really, I really, really like this capability. So starter apps. 
Exploring Gemini's capabilities, we want to try these starter apps with an interactive hands-on display of the capabilities of Gemini. Spatial understanding is one that I've just played with and it's incredible. Think of how Google Lens and the technology behind that works. This is that. So um, if we take 2D set bounding boxes, right, we're gonna give it something complex. In this photo, you can see cheese, you can see a muffin or a cake of sorts, and you can see one, two, three, four, five light cheese on a green plate. And here, what this is saying is, show me the positions of the items, label each one with whatever it is. I'm just gonna leave it as is, and I'm gonna click send, right? So the prompt's been sent, this is the raw prompt, detect the items, output adjacent list. What do we have here? We've got the locations in 2D, and we can also see these exact things, and it's also recognized the plate. How amazing is that, right? If we go to 3D bounding boxes and we just click send, it's gonna give you spatial coordinates of everything in this image. I have no idea how to use that, but that is absolutely amazing. Someone's gonna make use of this technology. The 2D bounding boxes, I can sort of wrap my head around. Uh, think of it like, a recipe finder, like that would be a useful thing to use this for. Take a photo of my fridge, go, uh, I've got these things that I wanna make a recipe out of, fires it off and I can make a recipe. I just so happen to have uh, an example of that. <laughs> One of Gemini's, uh, inside of Gemini's prompt gallery, which we'll get into is, uh, I've got these ingredients, it's an egg, it's some cheese and what I think is noodles. Um, don't I want to cook for lunch? Let's see what they can do here, right? And it's literally recognized that I've got these ingredients and it's produced some options for lunch out of these three ingredients and then what I might else have in my kitchen or in my workplace. Really cool use case of this, right? Um, if we go back to starter apps, the Map Explorer is an incredible one. Um, I'm not actually sure how this technology is working currently, but I've thought of some really cool use cases within this. Surreal, just because we don't even know what that means, right? Um, it's gone straight for the door to hell in Turkmenistan. It's a surreal location because of this fiery crater in the middle of the desert, constantly burning since 1971. Um, recommend the place. So it's basically saying, give me a location and then give me a caption when I put in the prompt, right? Uh, let's try Metropolitan. Show me an interesting large city. Uh, the Peruvian largest war, the largest city in the Peruvian Amazon that can only be reached by air or water. I can think of some cool, interesting like ideas that you could build this out with. Uh, think of restaurant recommendations, right? Uh, want, a, want a restaurant in a surreal location? Oh, I wanna do an activity in, in a place like this. Uh, let's try it actually. Um, show me show me a restaurant with a great view in Switzerland. So we're gonna run this and see what happens. That was super fast. That was actually amazing. I wasn't expecting that. Okay. Um, show me a bar with a great view of the beach in Africa. Oh, amazing. Okay, right. I recently went to the Cotswolds. Show me the best pizza place in the Cotswolds. Farm to table restaurant, Americans, amazing pizzas, five-star hotel. Yeah, this came up on the list. This is awesome. Look at that. I like, I, even I get amazed by this stuff sometimes. But I can think of some, um, some very cool use cases. If you're a developer, you can actually go and view all of these on GitHub uh, and, and actually start playing with it and building with them, which I think is amazing. If we go back though and we go to the prompt gallery, what this is is essentially ideas that Google has built for us to play with and try and get a feel for how we can use Gemini and why we can use Gemini. Um, there's stacks here, right? I can create a city cabin, a scavenger hunt for street food around the city of Seoul in, Seoul in Korea. Imagine changing that to London. Um, you've got some friends in town. You want to do something cool. You want to do something different. Voila. You could build a whole app just for this. 
I'm not sure if someone already has, but I think that's a great idea. And then you kind of dial it in. You do restaurant partnerships. You do influencer partnerships. You could do something really cool with this, right? Uh, we take another one, for example. Really, really lovely, low-hanging fruit kind of use case is how do I take a trip idea and I plan it better, right? I think this is the, uh, this is the idea of this prompt. Look at that. That's awesome. Take a food tour, any season, time needed. That is, that is amazing. Can I change the model on this so it thinks a bit better? Let's try this now. Um, stop editing and rerun. It's gonna do the, th it's gonna use the thinking model now. Let's see what it uh, brings up. It's a better, look at that. Central Park exploration, half to a full day. That's, that's for sure. And it's definitely spring or fall. Weather's amazing, been there. Um, Metro and Brazilian Bar. Yeah, you can do it in an afternoon. Broadway show is about three hours all in. Two to three hours for the 9-11 Memorial Times Square visit. Yeah, in and out within 30 minutes if you have to. This is, this is awesome, right? Why, why would you not want to start learning how to use some of the technology for your own benefit? And that's the crux. So that is a whistle stop tour of how to use Google AI Studio. Now, if you really want to get into the nitty gritties, you can get into the API documentation and you can start building your own experimental apps using these experimental models. Um, I actually haven't been able to use it properly yet, but it's a work in progress. Uh, you know what? Last one, I'm thinking of going to Spain. Let's do a weather search. What's today? What's the weather today in Malaga? Uh, let's run it. Come on. So the, I think that what it's done here is it's pulled from Google search, which it's calling grounding because I'm assuming it's grounding it in reality. Uh, the weather in Malaga is a beautiful 18.34 degrees C or for our American friends, 65 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, the chance of rain is zero and the humidity is 58. I will be getting on a flight. That sounds like a great idea. Thank you so much for your time. This has been absolutely amazing. Happy coding or happy building, whichever one. It's just another day in paradise.